what's up guys, welcome to the Botanical Gardening Podcast, episode 2. We had a lot of fun making this one, we hope you liked it. See ya. It was like a joke or something. Yeah, like something catchy to kind of get, what I kind of want to do is have you some You should look at my of... Snapchat right now. Okay. Because I don't think you've opened it. Oh! <laughs> 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 Bro, you obliterated that toilet, dude. <laughs> it took it took three flushes to get that stuff off the back. It looks like told- you. <laughs> it looks like you packed a like a wet mud into an empty toilet paper roll and just went <laughs> just straight at that toilet, dude. Well, to the botanical garden. To ensure nourishment to the saplings, make sure you spread your seed. Wow. I mean, I told you I had to go, dude. It was <laughs> it was the coffee. Ran. I just I just drank coffee. I just drank coffee. I, dude, every morning at work, it's like <laughs> me and me and my coworker. It's like he's almost waiting for me. If I have a thing of coffee, hold hands. I get up and I'm like, well, got a 930 or I'll be right back. <laughs> is it always 930? Yeah. You just say whatever time it is. No, it's whatever time it is. Sometimes it's like a, I get in at 830. Oh, we got 845. We got a jumper in the door. Exactly. We got, we got a turtle head. Dude, there's so many like phrases for that, which is yeah. kind of. Go for a solid a... shadow. Yeah, I got a prairie dogging. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, anyways, dude, let's talk about. We didn't get to get to our background. So, if you guys, if you guys don't know by now, Clay is my cousin. And oh, dude, funny you say that. Uh, guys, Kevin's my cousin. Oh, okay. Yep, we're cousins. We've been. We've been bowling ever since, like, when did we really start, like, actually hanging out to where I would be in like, Alabama? I, oh, is that, like, I, seven years old? Seven years old? Yeah. That sounds that about was, right. Like, yeah, maybe a, actually a year or two younger. Because I remember... We definitely I knew don't, each other. I don't really remember us hanging out that young, to be honest. No, me neither. I think we, like... But there's there's photos, obviously. yeah. We finally went to grandma's and like, I don't know if we, you remember when we used to sit in the living room and push like matchbox cars and see who went, yes. the, fa- who went the farthest? Yes. Yes. Cause I had that big duffel bag full of them. Yeah. Although I think that was at a questionably old age to where maybe we probably shouldn't I have been that- doing that as entertainment. Oh no. Hot wheels forever. Will be fun. <laughs> I We did that multiple times growing up. Dude, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. And then I, yeah. you remember, of course you remember, our beloved little uh, glow-in-the-dark frisbee. Yeah, dude, we had a lot of frisbee. You remember the smiley face frisbee? Yeah, the eventually. The yellow one? Yeah, didn't it break? Yeah, we did try to do the skip thing on the concrete where you yeah. spike it and it skips up and it shattered. Yeah. We, dude, we went through like a, fizz, a frisbee, a frisbee <laughs> phase. You try to say frisbee face. Frisbee. I tried. <laughs> you shot. That was weak. Um, Dude, so it was like the mini ones. They were like mini. It was like clear and it had like the little light in like the middle. This big, yes. And I remember we would hit like. Wait, how big? I didn't see. That's what my chocolate starfish looked like. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Remember, so yeah. Remember we'd throw it down and then it would rise. We'd play for yes. hours. Play for hours. Dude, we had a dude. purple one. What was the purple one? It was called the Gopher. I don't remember this. We had dude, a purple it was a pur- one. It was a, yeah, it was a dark purple one. It was literally called the Gopher. Oh, I may not know. have been you. I may have been cheating on you with with frisbees. Oh, with shit. other friends. Well, damn. I think you, you might have been actually. Let me make sure this is on. That somewhere. was like our thing, dude. We would stay yeah. stay in front of Grandma's house, literally till we could not see. The frisbee. That's what. Why we got the light up frisbee so we could throw it at dark. Yeah, and it ironically, was like the best one. Yeah, and then, and then we would we would go to the park down the street. 
the and we did all kinds of stuff there by the yeah. playground with the school Dude, yeah. okay but backtrack to so there's definitely pictures and i remember going fishing with a uh, good old pop pop good old pop 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 right. pop rest in peace but uh i think that's the first memory is like fishing do you remember yeah. i don't know i have a vivid memory of this and i'm pretty sure you were there uh where he brought out his bb gun but it was like a, a handgun yes yes yeah but i don't remember he what was he like, did with it i just remember him he shot I, it i remember like i was like damn he's a badass because he had a BB gun. My parents were overprotective, so I would have no, no, never no, no, been no. able to have one. Not the fact that it was a BB gun. It was a BB gun that looked like a handgun. It looked like a... Yeah, exactly. And it, and that was the first one... Like, the first time I ever saw a gun that had the little CO2 canisters. Yes. I was like, Pop Pop, why are you putting that in your mouth and inhaling? <laughs> <laughs> he was not huffing CO2 cans. I promise. <laughs> I promise he didn't do that. Without us knowing, he might have doubt it. Maybe highly doubt, doubt it. it. Doubt it. Doubt it. I mean, he was trying to get off the cigarettes then, so he made a. You never know. Just, you never know. He had a scratch and itch real quick, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, let's catch this bass, damn it! I but, think that was. Dude, we used to skip the hell out of some rocks too. That's where I really think I. I think my my throw developed at that age. Skipping those racks right. all the time. Yeah. But dude. do we get... <sighs> then after that, it was really like middle school where you came to Alabama consistently in the summer. So middle school, I would say, is probably when things started to get a little crazy. Because that's when... Oh, it got crazy. That's when I turned. I went from like awkward, nerdy glasses kid. So then I got the contacts... Got the Justin oh. Bieber flow, and then no, I turned into a little player. Well, not really. Also, you've been playing. I wasn't really even, a player. When you're in middle school, you think oh, you're a player, shit. but really you just... Yeah. It's like, Is that when you had the the braces and you had the headset? The headset? You don't remember? I remember you had like the... It was like the braces thing. It would connect oh here. Oh my gosh. And dude, you would I, put your rubber bands and it'd be out of, out of your dude, mouth. Yes, you're bringing back some rough times. I was talking. But that was about, after that, right? I that was yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember when you got the contacts. I think it was before that, though. Even is when you started coming down consistently, and then like year yeah. three of that is whenever you're like, damn, Kevin so had off. puberty. Yeah, and then we'd go yeah, on like just... we wouldn't go on like. So you would have like a couple friends that happened to be female, and we would go. You're like, hey. Hey, these two girls want to hang out, and I was like, "Oh, oh, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. we got to give them names. We can't use real names. I mean, uh, we could, <laughs> and just expose them. <laughs> Nothing nah, happened. No, no. But I mean, Except dude, I never had the balls to like, um, like talk to girls really. But then when I when I went with you to Alabama, I felt like I was like yeah. invincible. So we well, would yeah, just go. It's like you're never gonna see him again. Have you seen him since? No." Do I want to see him <laughs> since? No. No. But So it's like, why not? Like, when in Rome, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That kind of deal. Yeah. I know you what remember What happens in story. Alabama stays in Alabama. Stays in Alabama. We would do... And I was so innocent at the time. And I guess you were too. But, like, we used to do... We used to do things that would probably just come off as dumb to us now. But, like, when we were so young, we would yeah, do we things that we... We would do things and we'd be, we would think we were like so ridiculously crazy for doing them. Oh, we thought we were like starring on Jackass. I don't know why. And it, I guess it is a still a little bit crazy to this day, but you know I've told you this. The one time we were at the driving range, it was like 9 p.m. <laughs> Wait, it, I wasn't, we were. <laughs> may have we like been 16. a little later than that. Yeah, this we is like later. 16. Yeah, that's true. Um, It was right alongside the road. And then you you whipped a 180 and you piped one down the the yeah, road. See, people know what driving range this is, <laughs> dude. That was hilarious. And then yeah. when we, when that nice girl down the street um, let us use the golf cart. Okay, so this is like 
we were like eighth grade. So this was like the Point Mallard days, like the water park days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We would go, when you were down here, we'd go like at least three or four times for like the week that you were here. But I think this is the trip where you were in Alabama for like a month. Yeah, my parents so left and then took an airplane yeah, by myself. So, no, 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 no. Grandma went up to Ohio and you came back with her. Mm-hmm. Right? And then you, I think so. you were here like a week and then your family came down to go to the beach and you, I think you went with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what happened. Yeah, you and went then with I, them. You were just. And then on my way back, I stayed another week or two. I think it was Florida. two weeks. Yeah. And then you flew back by yourself and you're like 13. Yep. I was, 14, I was honestly, crazy. I felt so cool. The little flight attendant gave me this like wristband. It was basically <laughs> like, at the time. I'm underage. At the time, it was basically like, hey, if you see somebody with this wristband, make sure they're well taken care of because he's a kid. But I was like, oh, I got the VIP wristband. Like, I was feeling, yeah. You tried to go to the bar and order a drink. <laughs> so I ain't got an X. I got a wristband, man. Yeah. But yeah. So that, that, was, so that was that trip when the golf cart situation happened. So yeah. there was, uh, so what, give, me, give me two uh, names. Okay. Um, uh, Macy and Tracy. Macy and Tracy. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, so yeah. W- wait, which one's Macy? What's one's Tracy? Does Ma- Macy owns the golf cart? Yes. Yes. And then her friend was Tracy. I don't even fucking remember Tracy, honestly. Not a whole lot, anyway. Or wait, Tracy is was a me- no is- Tracy was the one that we were both like. She a bad mama jamma. Yeah, that's the reason we were hanging out with them. But yes, yeah, because yeah. I think we. We found them, found them. We met them, kind of talked to them at Point Mallard, at the water yep. park. Yep. And then they were like, I guess we got numbers exchanged. I don't think Snapchat was out yet. Yeah. So Macy Maybe. had the... Tracy had Macy the... Lived... Macy what? had... <laughs> so, so Tracy had the goods, but Macy had the golf cart. And so... Yes. We hung out with Macy for the golf cart and Tracy for the goods. Although we did not, neither of us got any goods. No, no. Except for the food they made us, which was kind of banging. Dude, I kind of felt like we used them maybe a little bit. Like maybe they wanted. Absolutely. We just used them for some fun. And then. No. Do you want to talk? Dude, when we, when we took the golf cart, you want to tell that story? I don't know. You have it firsthand. I don't know, but I think. Was I the driver? Or were you the driver? Yes. No, you drove. Don't oh. put this on me, Ricky Bobby. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. So I, I don't think we were using them because they were also using us in a way, you know, well, just for we, we were, were all hanging, hanging out, enjoying. Each uh, other's- we were hanging out and then she said she had a golf cart and it was her dad's and we took it and drove away. So we weren't really hanging out with them at the time. They were on it, too. Are you sure? I don't think they were. Yeah, whenever, whenever, yeah. When it went down? It. Oh, yeah, okay. when it went down. I, yeah, shit, I forgot on, about that. I wasn't. I think I was on the swing or something. But anyways, okay. no, prior to that happening, we were in like the, the, in the park, walking around, and they pulled up on the golf cart and was like, hey, my brother thinks he, he's like a rent-a-cop. He thinks he's hot shit. He's going to try and come and get us. Do you remember talking to him? No, actually, I don't. I don't remember talking to I remember talking to him. I have no idea what, what he said. I think he was trying to... He was literally in a Walmart rent-a-cop outfit. And driving oh around gosh. in his fucking... In his 06 Toyota 4Runner. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you kids. I, I don't know. He was just. I think he was like 18, maybe. And we thought he was so much older just because he was driving. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, yeah, so the golf cart. We kind of just like were riding around the neighborhoods doing whatever (laughs) and somehow i have no idea how you get a hold of the wheel which is the worst idea for anyone to give (laughs) their personal property to you yeah no that's a bad call right there kevin pops the curb on this playground (laughs) it's like that little plastic like bump thing yeah i pop the plastic pvc tube and then there's the mulch kevin pops it tries to cut a hard 90 (laughs) front it was one of the front wheels just falls off. It just <laughs> popped. It just busted off, and then we 
We tilted. It fell off so and oh dude, you dug into the ground. Like there was a divot. Yeah, yeah, no, we yeah. It went through the mulch. Oh it God. was into the dirt. And yeah. Because we were going pretty so, quick. I thought we could hit some air and the mulch would be a, a safe place to land. No, it wasn't was, even it wasn't even because of you popping the curb thing. I think you just hit like you just yanked the steering wheel to the left too hard and to the left it, or right. Yeah. I mean, it may have already been cracked, but in the end you you broke the the axle yeah it's not like way. the wheel just came off you snapped the front axle and then i i remember we picked it up and rolled it back onto the concrete and tried to brush off all the dirt and then she called her dad <laughs> and was like hey dad uh the front wheel in the golf cart just fell off <laughs> and this is this is the best part about macy is she took the fall for you she did dude and you didn't even kiss her dude <laughs> that's messed up but it was Macy. Was... So? You're right. I should have just Rome. taken one. I went, yeah, went and... <laughs> but then there was there was JC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, guys, we had a little technical difficulties, but we're back. I don't know how, but the recording stopped. So here we go. Anyways. But you wanted to talk uh, about... <laughs> let me tell you about a girl named JC. <laughs> so we had Macy Tracy. Let me tell you about a girl named JC. Actually, you should tell, because uh, well, I guess your eyes were closed when you were macking. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah. There's, I, there's a girl named JC. Another, there's another water park girl there for you. Kevin and JC and I went to the movies, and Kevin decided to wait and pull the moves at the credits. Yeah, dude, she was pretty. Yeah. She was fine. Well, at the time. Well, I I don't know about now. <laughs> sorry, if, sorry, JC, if you're out there. Um, oh yeah. man! Sheesh. Yeah, back in eighth, don't know eighth grade. Yeah, yeah. So the I remember getting up to leave, and I walk like two or three rows away, and I turn around, and you know it's dark, the movie theater. Yeah. All that's running is the credits. It's just a dim little light on Kevin. I just see two heads. It's just moving, and I was like, oh god. Dude, I was so I was proud like, of myself for making the move. I was proud of you too, but after six and a half minutes and I saw every single person that worked on that movie, I was ready to go. And I, the guy that was working, yeah. the guy that comes in and sweeps the the theater afterwards, he was ready for you to go. Yeah. Because oh, I'm God. pretty sure he got every every row of seats. And then he stopped at yours and was like, young love, and just kept going. Dude, but he was I'm ready. telling you what, when you're at that age and you, pull, and you bust a move, and it actually works out. Oh my gosh, it was it was great. It didn't even matter if it was Casey, JC, Catracy. You never know. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, but, well, I but mean, dude, fun was... fact, I busted the same move on JC years later. Dumb. <laughs> yeah, you told. I think you told me that. <laughs> yeah. So in some way, yeah. we're Eskimo Bros. Yeah. But I think that has a different meaning. Anyway. I think so, but we're kind of we're kind of Eskimos. I mean, if you think about it, with the, the lips, just you and I. Mind. Well, yeah, with 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 JC. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Anyways, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like the last couple times, we just kind of so we changed from frisbee into discs. Yes, because so we, we did the got disc golf. Cracked at disc golf. And I think playing with frisbees is what kind of, like got us like a head start in the disc golf game i mean that's kind of like the only reason i got into it is because like, yeah. i had the form because we used to throw for it like i wonder how many reps of frisbee throws we have dude so man i i mean Thousands. literally literally hours upon hours like almost every night you know it was like, like a, two weeks we were throwing frisbees I, you know i don't even know how we came to enjoy it for that long I like, think grandma just had a frisbee in the garage and we were like, what else are we going to do? Yeah, it's true. It is grandma. And we house. just like, that was our, like the age where all we, we just wanted to be outside constantly. Yeah. And like, just do hood rat shit. Not 14 years old, which yeah. includes breaking golf carts and, and yeah. Yeah. Picking up at, with the, JC. at the local <laughs> water park. Yeah. Getting all the ACs. Yeah, so then, yeah, so the last couple of times, I think it was just disc golf, like, if we could. Yeah, yeah we'd have to wake time, up early as hell, too. To do yeah, that. yeah. At one time, your family came down, and we couldn't find time to play, except for the day you were leaving. 
mm-hmm. and it was 6 a.m. freezing and it was raining. Yeah. And we like were running playing disc golf. We're still out there though. Dude, it's so fun. Yo, so I, um, I mean, that's a mental but, check right there. Yeah. Playing in the rain, there's no way like mentally we were there. Yeah. we. I think we were just happy to be out there, honestly. Facts. Doing some Although, good. I, when I play sports, a lot of the times it's like I cannot find fun if I'm not doing well. And it's awful. I hate it. Because some people like I'm able to play with, some people are out there like, Oh, I messed that one up. Oh, well, we'll get them next time. Dude, if I, if I like completely yeah. like whiff a shot, I'm mad. And I just wish you're, I, could, I think, I, I think know. you're way too hard on yourself. I probably, when it am. comes to, to competitive sports. Dude, yeah, for sure. Cause we, I got Cause, pretty into disc golf, like did a few tournaments because when actually I think both of us started playing disc golf from like a high school team. Because I started um, with my cross country team, we practiced every day at a disc golf course, and so afterwards we would just go and play. Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, okay. So you were like already there. Yeah. So we would. It was Harbin Park, and we would go and we'd practice, and then after practice we would play. And so I played like almost every day of the week, and then I got. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of my buddies is on. I don't know if he still is, but he was on like the um, PDGA tour where he was doing Whoa. some of the some of the big events with some of the big names. I don't know if he still is, but he basically because he was on my cross country team. So he basically when I stopped and then started and then stopped, he just consistently yeah. played. And now he's probably like 27, 28 and he's cracked. So, so yeah, yeah, I remember the baseball team. I don't like we would have practice and then we would go play disc golf. And then every time we played disc golf, we'd have to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> it's just like a hundred degrees. And after like exerting all this energy, we went to Taco Bell of all places. Yeah, dude. And we would, it would go during happy hour. So you'd have to get the Baja freeze for sure. That was like the go-to that. Yeah. I love Baja blast. The freezes are good for sure. And like, I remember like every time we would play, so, you know, like in like typical golf, everyone's quiet. Yeah. So we would always play to where somebody would yell out the most random thing to try to get you to like mess up your shot. And it, it, it would get vulgar. And we're just in the woods throwing a disc golf around, like playing disc golf, just yelling, just obscene Penis. vulgar language. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's plenty of those. Plenty of just. Yeah. And like, trying, I, to, trying to mess somebody up. Like all sports is like mental. Dude, that's what I'm saying. So I never really could afford golf, like real golf. Because disc golf, the best part is you buy your discs and then you can just go out to yeah. the park. It's free. Th- dude, that and golf, like a disc, you can play with three discs or you can just play with one disc. Like it doesn't. Yeah, no, you can like, do whatever. 20 bucks investment and you're playing the game. Yeah. And then for golf, it's like, you know, there's 14 clubs yeah. in a bag. The, the, the bag. Clubs, there's the bag, and then every time you go out, even if you want to play nine, you're at least going to spend twenty, twenty five dollars. And then for eighteen, a lot of the time it's like fifty. So it's crazy. Yeah, and, and I, uh, golf balls like you got to keep up with them. That's true. Like if you sh- yeah. if you shank a shot or you know water hazard, like that's what five bucks. Yeah, premium dude, premium golf balls. You buy twelve twelve balls. Wait, I think, I think in a sleeve there's three. And you get four, yeah. So twelve balls, like fifty dollars, for twelve dollars. Fifty? Yeah. Yes, I'm not kidding, dude. dude. Yeah. So it's super expensive. So anyway, I played today, and how did it I, go? So I went. <laughs> so I went by myself, and I thought that if I went by myself, I would just be able to play by myself. You would think, but no, I went right. to like too prestigious of a golf course to where. They didn't want a solo player. They wanted it to be like in groups of four. So I had to join three random dudes. And I mean, they were nice, but I'm not used to playing in front of people I don't know. And oh, they I, were totally shit talking you behind. Dude, like you, you drive and they'd be like, what a, what a weak shot. So I don't know if you know, but the, like if you're. No, I don't know. him. <laughs> not him. Uh, oh, 
<laughs> so if you have if you have a handicap, or well, if you know your handicap, so your golf handicap is basically, um, like it measures your potential best score, if that makes sense. So it it kind of counts for over par. So I am a twenty five golf handicap. I suck, but that, that really basically that basically means that when I'm when I have a good round it's usually something around 25 over par after 18 holes. Okay, so like your best, like you're like absolute, so like, per, like best round of your life. Like you're hitting everything where you want it as far as you can. The best yeah. you could do is over well, 25 well, over. Well, it, it basically takes all of the rounds you have and and takes your best one. And then that's kind of like, so potentially my my potential best could be better than my handicap, but I just haven't done it yet. If that makes sense. So okay. anyway, anyway, I'm a 25. It's not good. So I'm shooting in like par 72. Usually I'm shooting in like the nineties. So, okay. um, I played with a guy. I think today. you're a 10. Thanks dude. Yeah. Anytime. I played with a dude today who is a six handicap. <laughs> so semi pro, which is nuts. I mean, scratch golfers are pretty much professional. Well, maybe, I mean, you know. What's a scratch could, golfer? Scratch golfer pretty much means that their handicap is a zero. So oh, they're shooting okay. par. Um, and so, dude, it's so intimidating. Like, he he hits an, like a beautiful shot. And then I go up to the tee box. <laughs> and everyone and everyone's like kind of doing their chit chat. And then they like, so, 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 so. And it just gets absolutely quiet. And I'm just up there like, hey, okay, respect. here we go. And dude, Wait, did you, did you partake, partake in chit chat? Like when somebody else was up? Not really. I mean, did I didn't you have really your own cart or did you have to share? I had to share with, with the random oh, guy. Oh no. With the six handicap. So I would go up to the tee box and they'd all get quiet. And you know, they're all right behind me. And I'm just like, okay, just don't fuck up. Like, just hit a good one here. And I will tell you that probably 15 of the 18 holes off of the tee box, I fucked up. <laughs> and it's so embarrassing. You like, like, I would just barely, you know, I'd like top the ball and it would only go like 50 yards. And then I'd have to turn around and be like, well, guys, and... Dude, they felt so bad for me. They were giving me like the pity, like, "Oh, nice shot," even though it wasn't like good at all. Oh, no. You should have turned around and been like, "Sorry, go ahead." That happened the entire round. I mean, it was the worst. I stopped keeping score because I knew it was just going to be terrible for like my handicap and all that stuff. <laughs> you should have just like turned around one time or like in the cart going to the next hole. You should be like, "Playing pretty good today." <laughs> just feel. Like yeah did you beat anybody like on a, a shot like no i was somebody in our group was like in his 60s for sure and he he was he, under no i mean like of age like he was oh. an older he was an older oh. fella and he smoked me and he was probably oh, the worst of the group no. so i i almost decided not to talk about it during the dude during the podcast but i have to just How to check for you how huh? heated. Dude, like, I was just like mad or like embarrassed. Oh, the entire ride home I was punching at the steering wheel. Like I was livid. There was one <laughs> and like when I get mad, I get so in my head and I uh I just start pouting. I just like Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? And like Rachel called me during the round, and this was right oh, after no. I hit a bad shot. And I'm standing with them, and I don't know what I'm thinking. I I was standing with them. And Rachel calls, uh, and she was like, she understood, she could, she could tell something was wrong. And I was like, yeah, I'm out here. I got put with three randos, and there's like not even a point being here. I, I literally they said, can hear that. You? yes, they all turned oh, around and no. looked at me. And I was like, damn, I shouldn't have said that. That was messed yeah, up. Yeah, they thought you were, ta you were talking to them. They didn't realize you were on the phone. Yeah, because I didn't realize. First year old guy that. turned around and be like, this guy. I didn't realize they were that close. So I was taught, was like, Honestly, there's not even a point of me being here right now. And 
I felt bad because they all looked at me. And I mean, they were a great, they were a great group. Like they were, they treated me so well. They, they didn't like, I mean, the only thing that they were doing, which is one of my pet peeves is when someone, when I do, when I fuck up and somebody better than me tries to give me like a helpful pointer afterwards. Without you asking. Yes. It's like, it's like, yeah, it's like I, I mess up and they're like, oh, that's okay. Just make sure to, you know, get that club face straight next time. I was like, I fucking know. I know. Okay. Just stop. <laughs> I mean, obviously I said it. Dude, I. See, but it's I, different though. It's different because whenever we would go to like Top Golf or like the driving range, you would tell me stuff like that. But I have no knowledge of golf. Yeah. So I'm yeah. a lot more receptive. Like, I don't give a shit if I hit it 50 yards or if I hit it 500 yards. Yeah. Like, I'm just out there to swing and just hang out. And, like, yeah, I'm going to ask, like, for pointers. Or, like, mm-hmm. if you give me information, I'm going to take that. But, like, how I relate is, like, if if I'm sitting there in a batting cage hitting yeah. a baseball. <laughs> I just voice cracked <laughs> so bad. Anyway, continue. Yeah. And, like, okay. <laughs> somebody comes up behind me. He's like, you know, you're dropping your shoulder. You need to keep your elbow in, blah, blah, blah. You know, but, hey, oh. man, I know what. I'd be like, unless it's like Derek Jeter or somebody. Yeah. He just comes. Then you're just like, you, you know you're dropping your shoulder, right? It's like, dude, you just, know you. Just, just go hit. Like, just shut up. Yeah, no, that's, no, yeah. I hate that. If I don't ask for help, unless it's like one of my like really like close friends or something. Like if a stranger yeah, just comes up to me. Yeah. He might as well be saying like, hey, just want to let you know you're doing that really wrong. You know? <laughs> like, it's like, oh, suck. thanks. Thanks. By the thanks, way. Dude. Yeah, I'll just go fuck you myself. Yeah, yeah, well, anyways. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we- my round was trash, and I was wondering, because I know you are good at baseball and you were successful. Was. was. What is a way that you, like, because everybody's like, you know, just worry about the next ball or the next play, whatever, if you mess something up. How do you, like, uh, mentally, how do you mentally get out of that? Cause I have a problem where I just, I think way too hard about my mistakes and it just like basically a uh, snowball effect kind of thing. So I guess, so the thing, the saying that like, it's okay, get the next one or, uh, forget about it. I never really took that to heart cause yeah. it's really hard. Like it's, it can be done. Uh, but I would always want uh, I guess retribution or like revenge in a way. I can't mm-hmm. find the word I'm looking for. Um, but really, I think the best thing that I ever found to be helpful was uh, first just locking the fuck in, mm-hmm. like just being so focused that nothing yeah. else matters. Yeah. And I think it's just I think I'm a bit comes to my perfectionist kind of side. Like, yeah, I want to be so perfect in do everything in the exact way that it should be right um and just being so locked in that i don't hear anything else that is just me and that action and i'm focused on doing that completely but also practice and muscle memory yeah takes away from all that mental that's true so clearing your yeah like just being locked in and focused on the one objective of hitting club to ball is the best mental and my, in my opinion, like everybody has their own tricks and stuff. But if you're thinking about, OK, I got to keep my club face open. I got to make sure my shoulders this way. I have to make sure my hands are this way. If you're thinking about all that, you're going to you're going to mess up. You're yeah. not going to hit it very far. Dude, I like it. Though. But, uh, I like that thought because I love the because I think I could probably work with that is like just like the revenge thing that you said. Yeah. Like if you hit one bad, like if I were to hit one bad, I definitely get that feeling of like Gotta just, make wanting, for it. just wanting to hit that next one, just taking what I like, what I thought yeah, would be the issue down. and just like really dial in on the next one. So, yeah. And also I think repetition is huge because I keep, I keep trying to change little things to like fix my swing when really I think I just need to go and practice just and like it and it. On, <laughs> on the way home, I, I was like, I'm not going back out to golf 
until I've hit 500 practice balls. Like I, cause I think I have a problem where I just go golf and then I get mad at my mistakes and then I don't train in between, you know? Yeah. So I, I think I need to seriously like get some muscle memory down. Even if it feels good after like a hundred balls at the driving range, I need to go back to the driving range and make sure Not I even can hit balls. Yeah. You could just swing dry swings. That's true. That's muscle memory. But, uh, also, uh, as far as repetition, uh, before you hit just visualizing, I found that to be successful for me. Like, you know, on, in baseball, oh. you're on deck, you're standing there, like watching the pitcher, uh, you just visualize, okay, he's throwing a curveball. When he throws me a curveball, and you just visualize it in your head of where it's coming, and have, like just picture it in your mind. Like, I'm going to hit this ball in, into the right field, and I'm going to get a single. Like, right. you just visualize that. Or, like, you're about to tee off. You're like, okay, the wind's kind of doing this. I'm going to hit it right at that spot. And it's going to yeah. curve a little bit to the right or to the left, whatever. And it's going to land on the fairway and I'm going to be a happy, happy little boy. And then I'm going to skip and frolic down the fairway with my club in the air, like progressively taking off clothes as I get to the ball for the next shot. Yeah. Just visualize all of that. And I, you'll probably have to Yeah. I think you're right. I do. Because I've heard that before. People have said that in the past, like just really figure out what you want it to do and don't just go up and blindly just try to make good contact. Because I think even yeah. though, even if it doesn't do what I want it to do, the success rate of like it being playable is probably a lot higher if I'm just thinking about, you know, where I want it to go and what I want to do with it sort of thing. So, yeah, I think the just the main thing that helped me was just locking in. Yeah. Like just having just being so focused on one total task. concentration, total concentration, <laughs> breathing, just complete. It's like, don't make it bigger than what it is. Yeah. Just cool, calm, collected, level head. Just uh, dial you're, the not, you're not up, you're not in. down. Just lock the fuck in. Just, I'm going to, maybe like not so much, I don't know. There's also like a bunch of mechanics with golf that I don't understand. But as far as yeah. mental, as far as mental, you got to be level. You can't be a roller coaster. Yeah, which I was and always yeah. am, usually. Oh, you were, you were tilted. I was actually like you were face planted. <laughs> Literally. You were all no. you were on the way home punching your steering wheel and people just saw a toaster just me, 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 me. And they're like, what the <laughs> why the hell is he honking at me? Yeah. <laughs> You're just sitting there in your visor just fucking Mike Tysoning your I was so steering wheel. mad. And that because like we're we're, oh, we're obviously we're doing the podcast like obviously right after I get home from golfing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I can't be in this state of mind for the podcast. No one's gonna want to listen to it. I was like, lock, I lock was in, con- like literally concerned. I was like, I don't know. Maybe we're gonna have to do it later or something like that. But I'm fine. We're we're good. I just it it just makes me want to get out there that much more and fix it. You know. Yeah. So yeah, sports is hard, especially golf. when you're trying a yeah. new sport. Like, like you're yeah. just now starting playing golf. So like yeah. I wouldn't have such high yeah. expectations for yourself. You're right. But also like every day you're either getting better or worse. Derek Jeter, I'm pretty sure said that. You know, he oh, okay. like before before a game, before a professional baseball game, Derek Jeter would hit like a thousand balls off the tee before he even played the game. Wow. So like he'd get there like two or three hours early or however, four or five, and he'd hit a thousand off the tee. Not a hundred, not two hundred, a thousand. That is so that's why, many balls. Yeah, I mean, it's just perfecting his form, his craft. He just perfected it, and that's why he's like, you know, over four thousand hits, and was you know six time Globe Gold Glove. I don't know if it was six. I just pulled that out. That's so, really cool. Yeah, repetition. One of, okay. One of my, uh, I have no idea why. But one of the ideas I have written down, or like podcast topics, it says Uber driver birthday surprise. Do you have any idea what that means? Oh, 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 oh. Uber driver birthday surprise. Oh, my birthday. Yeah. The most recent time you came to Alabama. The Uber? 
Oh the Uber. Gosh. Yes. So changing gears going back to us hanging out. All right. So <laughs> I was supposed to fly. I was supposed to fly into Alabama. So we were. I was going from Omaha to Atlanta as a layover. I had no idea you were coming. This is a yeah. my birthday surprise, clearly. Yeah. And from Atlanta, I was supposed to fly to Alabama in for that <laughs> night. And uh, Luna. <laughs> and um, so so basically... I get to Atlanta and all the flights are absolutely booked. Like there's lines everywhere. And I think that the reason because of it was there was like super bad weather. And so tons of flights were getting canceled. So my flight got canceled once and then, or I'm sorry, it got delayed once and then got delayed again. And I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to get to Alabama until I think the options I had were, it was like the next day, right? Spend the night in Atlanta and then go in the next morning. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. So I started looking into options. So there was a rental car option. Got in line. I waited in this line for probably 30 minutes just trying to get a rental car. I've actually never gotten one before. I didn't know what I was getting into. But I was like, just, we're going to figure it out because I need to get to it like Alabama tonight. So I, I am probably five people away in line. And the dude at the front desk gets on the mic and is like, attention, everybody. We're officially out of cars. So nothing we can do for you. And I was, for one, I'm a little nervous. Like I'm a little scared because it's like Atlanta. I don't, I'm by myself. I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, I can't. Are you going to spend the night in a hotel or like the airport? Are you sleeping on a cot? Yeah, I. I didn't know what I was going to do. So I start thinking and eventually Uber comes to mind and I'm like, this is going to be expensive as hell. Cause it's still probably a three hour Uber. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a three and a half hour Uber from Atlanta to my house. No, to Birmingham or something like that. No, Birmingham was an hour and a half. So like two hours. What I was getting at was basically you had to drive like two hours to get to yeah, where I, drove I was. Hour, I drove, yeah, I drove two hours and I think I left at like 10 o'clock or something. So we're jumping the gun a little, but I did find an Uber. So I thought there was a, like a seven, 17 year old kid from Atlanta. I mean, he had he never left. He, he was young. He was very young. Oh he was from, from Atlanta, had never seen snow. I mean, or like driven in it. I'm sorry. He's probably seen it, <laughs> but wait, what kind? I uh, might've seen this, some, <laughs> some snow actually in Atlanta, but, Hang um, on. so he picks me up. I get in and he looks at his phone and he's like, Oh, Oh no, no, I can't, I can't do this drive. I only do local drives. And this is after he already accepted my Uber. I was like, what do you mean? Did, did you not look at your phone is before it accepting it? Him? No, it does. <laughs> he just he just blindly picked it. And so yeah, I got one. And so he is trying to back out on me and I can't find another. I've been trying to find someone to take me three, three hours. But for Uber, that's just not really a thing. Right. So, I mean, it was a couple hundred dollars. And so I basically was like, OK, I'm at my last resort. Here we go. And I was like, you know, I already, you know, I already kind of accepted this and it's, I'm paying a lot of money to get there. So he's like, well, well, like how much? And <laughs> wait, so does he get the full ride or does he get like a percentage? He gets a hey, percentage. I think he gets a percentage and then he also gets the tip. Right. So but tips also based on like the full amount. Right. Yeah. And so. So this is after he already backs out on me. I'm like talking numbers here and I'm like, yeah, like I, it's making me pay this much. And obviously, you know, I'm at least going to tip 20%. So he's like, <laughs> all right, man, get back in. And so I get back into his car and I should have known like right here and there that this is an awful idea because we, we take off, we're going 25 miles an hour out of the uh, airport and like his car, it just stutters. It goes from like 25 miles an hour to immediately 28 miles an hour and then back up to 25. He's like, so how are you doing, man? It's like he didn't even realize or like he he this happens all the time. 
Yeah, and so I look at his I look at his dashboard. A dashboard is that? Wait, are dash? you in the back or are you right in the front? I'm in the front. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in the. the front I, I'm in the passenger seat. Yeah. You just hit one of those, like just a little lean over, check and, out the dash. Or no, no, I think I'm wrong. I think I am in the back. I, I, I have been known to drive to drive shotgun with Ubers, but I think this time I was in the back because okay. I don't think I would have been able to see the dashboard that well if I was in the front. Yeah, you would have to like lean over. Like, what yeah. You doing? So the dash, it does. It's not even like a small little light. It is like a, it is covering half of his dashboard. And it's a big triangle with an exclamation mark in it that says like warning pull over immediately or something like that. I mean, it was like a serious. So basically, wrong. yeah. So we get on the highway and I mean, every probably minute this car sounds like it's revving like full RPM and then lurches it goes from like five miles an hour higher to lower. And I, I'm terrified. I'm like, this car is not going to make it three hours. And it was so, an hour and a half or like, so, so it was supposed to be three hours, but then like, I think we compromised. Okay. And so it wasn't, it wasn't, I was fully really committed to come drive to Atlanta to get you. Yeah. That was going to happen, but we weren't going to get back or like we would have had to have stayed in Atlanta, yeah. but I was going to at least stay with you. But you found an Uber. Luckily, because if you would have got the rental car, you would have had to like return it to the airport uh, in Huntsville. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so there was a compromise and I was going to drive like two hours to meet you. And so once you locked in the Uber, I think I hopped in and drove, drove to get you. Yeah, we, we kind of met halfway. And because I, the prices for the Uber... It was like a low enough price that I was like willing to do it kind of in the halfway point. Plus, no one would have drove an Uber all the way yeah. to. So anyway, we're on the highway and I really don't think it could get much worse. The guy doesn't really know or I should say the kid. He doesn't really know how to drive. I mean, he's like in the middle of like two lanes. He's just driving. Thankfully, the roads, there's not many people on the roads. This car should not be on the highway, let alone even on any road. And then right. it starts to snow in Atlanta. <laughs> and these these flakes rare, to be honest. These flakes are thick. Like he's got his windshield wipers all the way and we, the visibility is like nothing. And dude, there <laughs> I don't need to talk too much more about it, but there was there was several times that we almost got in a wreck cuz he was just and I was like holding on for dear life the entire time, just terrified. And he was terrified. I mean, the driver was terrified, too. Yeah. And the whole time, I don't know if you remember, like, the little kid from Up. How he yeah, always... Russell. Didn't he always address the old man as sir? Um. Yeah, well, maybe. Okay, so this kid reminded me of, like, that Russell kid. Where he was like... Like, it started out as like, how are you doing, sir? Like, this is... And then it, by the end of it, it was like... This is really scary, sir. <laughs> he was he still was he was still like like calling me sir, but he was also like freaking out. And I was oh, freaking yeah. out. And I was like, just take it easy, take it easy. We're all right. We're we're gonna we're gonna make it. And we we did make it. And then you drove me the rest of the way. That was the craziest experience I've ever had in an Uber on the didn't, roads in general. It was terrifying. He, like, he would just like slam on his brakes out of nowhere. Cause he thought he, yeah, he was no. Like, yeah. Well, it was like, as soon as he lost vis, he was in the middle of the highway, but as soon as he lost visibility of the road, like even for a second, he would slam on his brakes as if that's going to, I mean, maybe it'll. So one, maybe it'll help you not hit the car in front of you, but two, it's going to definitely ensure that the car behind you runs into you. Yes, for and like, sure. And there, I mean, yeah. So anyway, it, talk about a wild ride. That was yeah. insane. Uh, um, we didn't even get back until like one o'clock. It yeah. was worth it. It was for the memories. It's a pretty good yeah. story. N not so much for you, but I laugh at it. No, it was. It's funny to look at now, but God, it yeah. was. I mean, you're. It's just like when your adrenaline's pumping. It's like. You, your mind kind of shuts off and it almost felt like 
because I don't really remember more than that with the story. It uh, it was kind of a yeah. blur. It, uh, my my adrenaline was pumping almost the entire it, time. Even when there wasn't snow, it was scary to be in that yeah, car just with him. The fact that the car was saying like, "Hey, man." Turn like me you off. needed to pull over, yeah, and it was lurching and revving, and so, anyway. I wonder if he made it back. That's what I was kind of worried about, because it was supposed like, to, the snow finally died after about forty-five minutes of us driving, right? But it, but it was supposed to pick back up. Yeah, that's true. I wonder if he yeah. made it. We should reach out. I don't know. You think how. we could call him in? Oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I have him you on the podcast. Your Uber history. <laughs> have him on the podcast, like. How's it going, sirs? <laughs> sirs. Jeez. Yeah. No, he's a good Dang. kid. He just he really needs to work on his driving and get a new car. But hey, maybe that one ride that you did with him really kick started his Uber career. Maybe he or, reinvested. Maybe, maybe after that night he never did an Uber drive again. <laughs> so he, I ain't doing that again, man. That's too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Or he died. <laughs> or he, he died. Die. Or he died. We don't yeah. know. He probably slammed on his brakes and then got hit and then spun out and flew off the canyon. Just like freaking. Either that or his engine just exploded. Like Need for Speed Underground when you took it to the canyon to try to gain turf. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. To an OG game. Oh, but while you were telling that story, I showed off two dogs. Just for I place. did see you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they were trying to interrupt, and they're also just sitting here on either side of me, looking at me like, hey. They're being the bestest puppies. Well, kind of. I did see us. I did, did hear a little chatter back oh, there. A little, rip! A little bork. A little bork. Yeah. You did not just bork into the microphone. I did. Someone's some, clipping that? Yeah, some furry <laughs> some furry's gonna come on here and hear me bark and go, Gah! What's and then re- furries? Uh, and then replay <laughs> Nothing. Nothing's wrong with furries. No, I love yeah. it. Like Oh, uh, you love furries. Yeah, no, I, I actually am one. Really? Think, what are you? I think I have my raccoon butt plug around here somewhere. I'm sorry, what? What? Of of all things, you're a raccoon? A raccoon? A raccoon of all things. I don't know. That was the first thing I came up with. What does the fox say? I don't know, but I have been called Peter Cottontail. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> there's some story behind that. And I don't uh, know if I know it. I was kidding. I, I haven't been called that. Right, right. I... All right. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I was rolling. More. I, need a, I need a wireless headset. Yeah. I, my chair always rolls over the cord and then I get like caught up in like a, you know, a straight jacket. Yeah. First world problems. Oh, yeah, that of, was random. Um, speaking of first world problems. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, so today we, we talked about the World Series, College World Series last week. I oh, think it yeah. wrapped up. I think it wrapped yeah, up today. Old Miss. Old Miss. Old Miss won. Did you get to oh. watch any of it at all? Yeah, I know Auburn was in it, so I watched the two games that they played, uh, or three, and uh, they did okay. Apparently, they had like a stomach bug going around the team, so they were all sick. Oh, dang. And so like, Yeah, so they were fighting through that, but Ole Miss, they played Ole Miss at the beginning, the first game they played, and they got, uh, they just got outclassed. They just had better pitching, mm. uh, and they beat the number two team in the nation which wasn't saying much because they were pretty bad. Mm. Uh, I don't know why they were ranked number two. I guess just from, like, I guess their uh, conference play or something. But anyways. Yeah. So then they lost to Arkansas. So Auburn was out. And after that, I really didn't watch anymore. But I kind of kept up with the scores. And yeah, uh, Ole Miss just beat Oklahoma. Was it a close it last sh- game at all? or it was four to two. Okay. But it's a best two out of three. So I think they sweeped them. Okay. Because game three is supposed to be tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, so I had my... So those that, those those two dogs, they were just for clicks, I guess, but uh, only one of them's mine. Luna's mine. She, so actually, they're brother-sister, uh, but they're a year apart. So they're from the same breeder, 
but I got Luna like a year ago, almost a year ago, like a week away from her gacha day. But the way that came to be, I'm pretty sure I told you. But Luna was a poor little dog, poor little pupper that uh, needed to be rehomed. She was like two hours away. And the breeder, the, so her previous owner tried to give her away back to the breeder, but the breeder like started reaching out to people that they had given or sold dogs to. And so my mom was one of them. And so she was like, oh, we already have her brother, but uh, here, Clay, do you want this dog? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> for a good price too. Um, just because like personal reasons and I wanted my own dog. Right. And so literally like the next day I drove down there two hours to get this poor little pupper who was being, she was so neglected. Like her ears felt like softballs, just how matted the fur was. That's nice. And like her, her, yeah, her tail, it is sad. It was so sad. And she had the, the worst poodle haircut. Like she had like an Afro, like an eighties oh. Afro or like seventies Afro. You know how they get like big. Yeah. And it wasn't clean, but her tail was like a, so you know how people reference hair and be like, your hair looks like a rat's nest. Yeah. Yeah. You ever heard that saying? Yeah. That was her tail. I'm pretty oh, sure there was no. a rat. A rat was in her tail at one point. Was point. literally living in inhabiting children in her nest. Yes. In her yes. Nest. In her nest. <laughs> in her nest. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have two dogs too. Clay obviously knows. I have Theo and Penelope. They're both uh, Labradoodles. Theo is been given us some issues recently, Clay. Yeah, as you know. He's a big old boy. So my dad is actually, my parents are going to visit for the first time in forever here in three weeks or something like that. And what they don't know is that Theo has literally dug like six holes in the couch that they bought us. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean like every time. Yeah, no, he rips it open with his, with his little, he, he's like puss in boots with the glass. He's like, you know, he does the little (laughs) thing. And Theo literally does that dude. And he gets in there and he rips out all the foam and like the stuffing. And so I I don't know what to do. We looked into like getting replacements. They're fucking expensive. So I've just been using duct tape, just patching it up. And then I'll put a blanket over it. I wish you could take us on a trip. I wish you could just take the camera. I wish I could too. But yeah, Penelope is an absolute sweetheart. If a stranger comes up, you know, she just does this little thing where she like kind of does this and like wags her tail. And they're like, yeah. oh my God, such a cute dog. And then if somebody like, if we're in the hallway and somebody opens their door, just coming out of their apartment, Theo sees yeah. him. If there's any slack in the leash, he just bolts. He takes off right at them while barking, mind you. Yeah. And he's like, woo, woo. I'm barking in the mic again. And <laughs> you are first. He like, he like jumps up on his back two legs, just like trying to get to them. And he's a sweet dog. He wouldn't hurt anybody on like, intentionally. But they immediately, they're, which probably would be my reaction too. They like, oh, and like, <laughs> at, I'm trying to speak over Theo barking. And I was like, no, no, he's a, he's a good dog. Like he, he won't hurt you. And as he's like, I'm not going to do it again. But um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Are you, is your furry named Theo? <laughs> is it you on all fours just barking at people? No. That's why they're like, oh my god! It's a, it's my neighbor. He's barking. No, but <laughs> he's on all fours and he's I swear butt naked. <laughs> every, every, everyone in our apartment complex probably thinks Theo is like, I mean, it's it's literally true though. Whenever I'm outside, people will go out of their way to walk their dogs like around us, like. Because they just don't oh, yeah. want to, and I, I for one, am thankful because Theo is a maniac, but he's just so high energy, and we take him to daycare whenever we can. We we let him play, but right now outside is like a, you know, it's like a madhouse because of because of College World Series. It's hard to take him out, like and play with him. Oh yeah, because he gets distracted yeah, well, and wants to bark at every single person. Luna's the same exact way. Yeah, but so like like. like a car that drives by, she's barking. Every like people walk their like people walk their dogs and I keep my window blinds open just to, like let in the natural light and to let Luna look out. Yeah. She likes to look at she's really into bunny rabbits right now. 
Mm. There's so there's in my neighborhood there's a bunch of bunnies, but it's like kind of ha- how like an amusement park. There's the birds, and the birds really don't care how close. You, like you'd almost grab a bird at an amusement it's park. Kinda, it's yeah, right. You know what I mean? It's kind of yeah. like that with the bunnies in my neighborhood. They're so used to people walking around. Yeah, like I could get like five feet away, and if I try to like grab one, of course it runs. But Luna, lo- she's dying for a day that she can bust through a window and get a bunny Just get a bunny yeah sometimes i take her out on her leash to let her sniff the spot where the bunny was or like chase the bunny and i just have to hold on for dear life yeah well i mean she's 23 pounds she's not gonna pull me yeah but uh yeah, yeah that's Luna the same thing. is same thing yeah if me. it was roles reverse and it's theo theo's probably putting me on my face He's like 80 pounds, yeah. And he, when he's fully, when there's slack in the harness or in the leash and he takes off, it's like you need to just brace yourself and pray your shoulder stays in its socket. It's bad. <laughs> we we seriously need to send him off to like a two-week boot camp and just like. <laughs> he we, comes we, back and he's. We need to send him to. him like that though? We, I, I don't know. At this point, maybe. Because like we just need to like. Send him out to like a, like a hardcore prison of dogs, and he needs to come out like a hardened, you know, like man. No, he just yeah, he needs to go to boot camp, and he comes back, and he's just, <laughs> he's hey, yes, sir. Yeah, he's, he's been. He's gonna be the one calling you, sir. Does your weird question? Do your does your dog uh, walk when it poops? Yes. That is the yes, most I, annoying thing. Yeah, well, it, it's well like, I don't have to pick up my dog's crap. Oh, that's actually nice. I do have a yeah. backyard. I do shovel it over the fence like once a week. Yeah. Cap. But yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> speaking of poop, oh, dude, I have a story for you. All right, let's hear so, it. So this wasn't too long ago, but uh, I don't know what was up. So I'm just hanging out. It's like a Friday or no, it's like a like a school night, work night whatever it's like a wednesday night just hanging out and uh i'm not paying like luna's behind me or something and i just say i just what what, what's that smell i turn around there's a liquid puddle of just pup of just dog diarrhea Ah! and i was like no you poor dog (laughs) and so like i was like are you serious because that's not like her i mean she knows to go outside yeah. yeah and obviously that it's liquid but anyway, so I clean it up. I let her out. She goes and craps again outside. Oh, I like I witness it. And so I come back in. It's like maybe 1130 now. And I'm like, okay, that poor dog. And so I was like, let's go upstairs. Let's get ready for bed. Let's lay down. And we're laying in bed. Lights are off, pitch black. I hear her jump off of my bed. I was like, that's, that's weird. Now. That's weird. Uh, yeah. Literally five seconds late. Like, I'm kind of in and out of sleep. Like, I'm halfway awake. Yeah. I just kind of, she got my attention when she jumped down. Five seconds later, I hear the loudest, wettest <laughs> man fart I have ever heard. <laughs> I just picture that, like, artificial man fart, just super, just. Yeah. It like was that, wet. Like it was one. wet. The one with Demi Lovato. Like, I don't know if he's. <laughs> Okay, so it's not somebody dubbed it over Demi Lovato, but there's a I don't know. It's a popular. I know what sound you're talking about, <laughs> but I didn't know you were into Googling Demi Lovato fart. Movie. No, no. It's like maybe I can maybe I can uh, get a I'll do my best impression. Oh, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was and actually she not just, that bad. Except she looks a horse. At the beginning. Yeah, that did sound like a like a Winnie. But um. Winnie the Pooh, my bad. So, um, <laughs> and then she like looks at camera and she's like, oops. And it's the funniest video ever. But anyway, continue. You're talking about how you throw it on the screen right here. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Might. You never but know. Anyways, so I hear the loudest, wettest, just grossest in the world. And I'm like, what? No, no, no. Flick on the light. I shit you not. It's shit. Um, <laughs> she has sprayed it. On the wall. Like, no. it projectile. It projectiled out of her chocolate starfish. <laughs> and <laughs> I think I had, like, a shirt. I had, like, a shirt on the ground, on the floor, covered. 
uh, and just on the wall splattered. And so yeah, I didn't go to bed that night until like uh, ten forty five. No, not ten forty five. One forty five. That's so this rough. poor dog. It was a yeah. It was like you know. <laughs> so have you ever you know what gushers are? Gushers? That sounds yeah. like weirdly sexual. Is the it not? fruit snack. Oh, I thought there was like a slang term for like after two weeks in Marsha May or something. No, um, no. What? What's a gusher? You oh, what? no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah the fruit the, snack. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're, like they're amazing, hand, yeah. it's like if you took a handful of those and threw it against the wall. That's what it looked like. Okay. Just okay. For visual, yeah, that, visualize that. Yeah, I, I just did. And uh, yeah. But yeah, I so mean, yeah, that was colorful, my... at least. Oh, so another story about a dog, uh, Luna specifically, we're driving back from the lake. I don't even know if I've told you this. I don't think so. Uh, it's like an hour drive, and uh, she sits in the front seat with me. She usually just lays down and knocks out for an hour. And yeah. we're driving, we're maybe halfway, and all of a sudden I was like, uh, like I'm sitting there petting her, I'm watching the road, and I didn't even hear her, but I turn and look in my cup holder, dog vomit. <laughs> just <bleh. laughs> it smells she... like it smelled like she... uh what? At least you picked like a really convenient spot to Oh, it wasn't though. No, it's only it wasn't. a little bit. A yeah. little bit's in the dog in, in the cup holder. She went on the you know the center console? Yeah. You know the seat? Yeah. You know that gap in between it? <laughs> All the way down. And like into the track of the seat where you like you slide it forward and backwards, there's vomit in that track. Oh no, man. So yeah, and it smelled like just gre- the greasiest bacon that you could ever think. <laughs> it smelled like just it didn't smell bad, thank God. Um, she's been chain so, yeah. ripping bacon strips. Just but <laughs> yeah. Just spewed. I gotta got the whole bag. But the thing is, oh, okay, keep going, keep going. The thing is, uh, Ollie also threw up in his crate on the same trip. On the same trip, so you were just like, yeah, you were just the maintenance, the the janitor. Yeah, so I figured out how to take out my passenger seat, so that was fun. That is essential for that sort of thing. I did. All right, we're running a little over, but I wanted to tell you a story because it's hilarious, and I just thought about it with the uh, topic at hand. So I was having a great night at my my buddy's house from Cincinnati, Brendan, who we might have on uh, eventually. But anyway, oh. so this was actually probably, I don't know, this was a while ago, but probably the, one of the most embarrassing um, nights I've had because we were at his parents' house and we had a ton of, we had a ton to drink. I mean, it was just like close friends drinking in the basement of parents' yeah. house. Just classic college. Classic. You know? Or not even college. Oh, but like, I was... But like so, my, my no, it was still college. But it was like when I came home, and we had yeah, a weekend yeah. together. Uh, his his dad has a really nice bar down there too, which just also expedited the whole getting drunk process. Right. But anyway, I you know we drink a ton, and um, everyone kind of heads to bed, but my stomach is hurting me really bad. Oh, I remember this is you. <laughs> this is me. No, I not mean, a dog. We'll get to it. Yeah, it's not a dog. It's me. But um, okay. But I. I mean, I was. I was like we were talking about. I was pretty blacked out. I don't remember much, but I do remember. <laughs> I remember going to bed. I think I remembered what I remembered the night before. I got on the couch, took off the contacts, and went to bed. I so you were the next. Say condom. So <laughs> the next morning. <laughs> the next morning, um, Lisa. Or why am I name dropping his mom's name? Sorry. Um, wow, everybody look up <laughs> Brendan's mom, Lisa. Link will be in the comments below. It, it was uh, either straight to her Facebook. Dude, that's that's on me. That's just noob noob work right there. Um oh. but either mom or dad comes comes back downstairs um that next morning and finds me asleep and I wake up and I am big spooning their dog on the floor so i have i have fallen asleep with their dog on the floor and I, they thought it was hilarious and they took pictures and whatever so i wake up and 
they, they ask me like, Hey, or I think I might've actually left cause I had to go and I get a phone call later. I was like, Oh God, what did I do? What did I forget? Is what I was thinking. Uh-huh. Like, Hey, Hey Kevin, um, you didn't happen to like throw up or anything last night. And I was like, no, no, I, I didn't throw up. I just remembered. I, and then I was like, wait, maybe I might've, but I remember like I was like, by the toilet for a couple minutes just, you know, as a, just in case. Um, and then it all hit me. I just realized it. And I, it was remembering as they were explaining, they're like, okay, that's, that's just weird because like, um, this morning, my parents, they found, um, a handprint of vomit on their wall. And then when they went to go get their keys out of the key bowl on the uh, kitchen island, it was filled with throw up. And like, as there's no way, Kevin, as I'm listening, I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. And it's like all coming back to me. And that night, (laughs) that night I threw up in the toilet. I got up, stumbled to the couch, put my hand on the wall. It must have been all over me. <laughs> right. I, th- I threw up again. I mean, it's a pretty big key bowl. I threw up again just in the key bowl, and it was filled with keys. <laughs> yeah, everyone's keys. I threw up, and then I went to bed. And I was so, I was so embarrassed. It, we still talk about it. And not only that, but spooning the dog, too, that night. That's probably the best part. Yeah. I love that dog. <laughs> anyway, that was the funny Whoa. story. Whoa, maybe a little too much for spooning <laughs> dogs. And you did almost say condom. I heard it. No, contacts. Uh, okay, right, right, right. But anyway. pinch we, it off? Yeah, I think we're going to pinch this one off, guys. Pinch, pinch it, it off, off for next week. Uh, I hope you Appreciate guys Appreciate you enjoyed. watching. You're yes. a real one. If you Absolutely w- a real one. And also, I guess we could say thank you for watching last week's if you did, because um, we were blown if away. If you didn't, you suck. You should go do it right yeah, now. Yeah, go freaking burn. Um, but anyway, no, thanks for <laughs> thanks for everybody who uh, watched the first week. We were overwhelmed. Um, we expected Absolutely. to have... I expected to uh, end up that uh, first day after 24 hours. I expected to have four views, all four of which being my mom. And um, no, yes. actually... Uh, yeah, and us just rewatching it. Um, but no, we I think we almost got to 200 views. We ended up no with way. like, yeah, I think so. Either that, we're somewhere at 150 to 200 range. Um, we have a little well, under 20. Off by this point, we went. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is nothing. You guys can't just go and look at. But we went from like zero to almost 20 subscribers. We got several likes and comments. So we appreciate. We appreciate you guys so much. But that part's true. Yeah, we do Keep, care. Keep tuning in. Um, we're not pros, but we just hope to get better and better every week. So hopefully you guys can Absolutely. be part of that journey with us. Um, yeah. But anyway, ladies and gents, my fellow uh, seedlings. Uh, uh, make sure to spread your seed. Yeah. We also got the new intro. I hope you guys liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Uh, just pinch uh, it off already. Damn it. Yeah. We're pinching it off. Goodbye. Fuck. Just hit the button. <laughs> Put his. Oh, wait, is this the part where we're not supposed to talk? Yeah, it's over. Shut up. Okay, three, three, two, one, bye.